Hello everyone. Today we'll see problems based on chi-square distribution and this is the formula for chi-square distribution. This is equal to summation i is equal to 1 tn oi minus ei. The whole square divided by ei. Here oa is nothing but the observed frequency and ei is the expected frequency. And uh, the degrees of freedom also is n minus 1 here. Uh, as usual, we'll check the values. If the calculated value is less than the tabular value of uh, chi-square at a specified level of significance, then we'll decide whether we can reject the hypothesis or not. Uh, first, we'll see some examples and then, yeah. A sample analysis of examination results of uh, 500 students was made. It was found that 220 students had failed and 170 had secured third class and 90 had secured second class and 20 had secured first class. Do these figures support the general examination result which is in the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1 for the respective categories? Okay. And as I told you, they will give the tabular column values in the question itself. So what they have given? Chi-square of uh, 0.05 is equal to 7.81 for 3 degrees of freedom. Why 3 degrees of freedom? So, what are the ratios given? 4 ratios are given. Correct? So, because 4 categories are there. So, 4 minus 1, 3 degrees of freedom. And uh, now you can easily identify 5% significance level. So, they have given the value. Okay? So, um, the expected frequencies because uh, they have given that general examination result which is in the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. Okay, this is what actually happened and this is what they expected. So, this is expected frequency. Again, I repeat, when they give the question in the sample analysis of 500 students, these many students had failed, these many students got uh, third class like that, they have given. This is observed values. But what do they expect? 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. That is what their uh, question is. Do these figures support the general examination result which is in the ratio? So, these are the expected frequencies and uh, since it is a ratio, what you will do? What is the total? 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. So, what is the value? 10. So, 4 out of 10. How many students are there? 500. This is the first value. So, if you simplify, you will get 200. Similarly, 3 how many? Because sample size is 500 in your question they have given. Okay. So, um, if you want, I will show you the question. Yeah. So, results of 500 students was made. So, this is the sample size. And, um, yes. So, expected frequency for the second one is 3 by 10 into 500. Then 2 by 10 into 500. Then 1 by 10 into 500. If you simplify these, you will get 200, 150, 100 and 50. Now, what we have to do? We have to just substitute these values in the formula. Observed, we know. Expected, just now we calculated. We have to substitute. So, these type of questions they will ask in um, gate. Yeah. So, observed is what they have given in the question. 220 got this much, 170 got this much, 90, 20. So, respectively, since they said first for 4, uh, we calculated 200, second value we are writing 150, third value 100, fourth value 50. So, this is observed and this is expected. What is that summation of observed minus expected the whole square? That is 220 minus 200 the whole square plus 170 minus 150 the whole square plus 90 minus uh, 100 the whole square. When you write uh, 90 minus 100, it's 10 uh, minus 10 square. So, automatically all positive values will be coming. So, 20 minus 50 the whole square. So, you will get 30. So, after simplification, you can uh, use a calculator, get the value. And then the value you are getting is 23.67. This is greater than the tabular column value, right? This is what they have given in the question. So, 23.67 is very much greater than 7.81. So, we are rejecting the hypothesis. So, what uh, values that has been observed doesn't 
uh, match with the expected frequency what they have given 4 3 2 1 that ratio it didn't match with that so the hypothesis is rejected so this is a very simple direct question now the thing is if they don't give the um, uh, expected frequency last problem they have given in ratio if they don't give how to find the expected frequency so now we have to go back to the um, binomial distribution remember we calculated uh, observed frequency uh, sorry expected frequency from that i'll read this question one sec yeah so uh, four coins are tossed 100 times we did the same problem and the following results were obtained. Fit a binomial distribution for the data uh, to test the goodness of fit. It means I have to use binomial distribution to get the um, expected frequency. Okay. So they have given number of heads 0, 5, 1, 29. It's like 0 times. Uh, if we repeat the experiment, 4 coins, we are tossing it 100 times. So when they are doing the experiment, they are seeing they got 0 head 5 times. 1 head 29 times, 2 head 36 times, 3 head 25 times and 4 head 5 times. So what we have got the second value 5, 29, 36, 25, 5 is the observed frequency when they are doing an experiment. What do you mean by an expected frequency? Same problem we have done it already. We got the expected frequency by using the binomial distribution formula. So I am going to take this directly 7, 26, 37, 24 and 6. You have to refer binomial distribution uh, problem, mixed type of problems in probability. We have done the same problem, how we got this. So now observed minus expected the whole square by expected. So 5 minus 7, so minus 2 the whole square, so 4. So 4 by 7 plus the second one is uh, 29 minus 26 divided by 26. So we are going to sum all these values. So after doing the summation, we are getting uh, 1.15. So now you have to compare. Yeah. So now you have to compare this with the uh, value that they have given. They, what they have given, chi square of 0 0.05 is 9.49 for 4 degrees of freedom. Why 4 degrees of freedom? How many values are given? Set of values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 minus 1, so 4 degrees of freedom. So 1.15 is less than 9.49. Thus, the hypothesis that the uh, fitness is good can be accepted. So, they have given the hypothesis. If it's less than the tabular column, we are going to accept. If it's greater than the tabular column value, we are going to reject. So, refer the mixed type of probabilities video to know about this these values. Since we have done it in the class as well as in assignment, uh, I'll do similar problem in Poisson distribution. We have already done in binomial, right? Once if I... Explain in Poisson distribution, you will understand. Yeah. Uh, fit a Poisson distribution for the following data and test the goodness of fit given that chi square of 0 0.05 is equal to 7.815. This tabular column value that they have given for 3 degrees of freedom. So now these are the x values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And these are the frequencies 122, 60, 15, 2, 1. We don't know what experiment it is. So, but for the x corresponding f of x they have given. So, now what we have to find? We have to find the theoretical frequency or the um, expected frequency. What they have given, always remember this is observed. When you are doing an experiment, this is what you observe. So, we call it as an observed frequency. So, but we will be using probability to find the expected frequency and we will compare. Okay. So, whether this distribution is good for uh, this experiment or not. So, now to find the theoretical frequency, we are going to use Poisson distribution since they have asked in the question. So, for Poisson distribution, if you remember, what is the formula e power minus m, m power x by x factorial. Correct. So, now uh, what do we want? We want mean m. To apply it in the formula. So what is the formula for mean? Summation f into x by summation f. So uh, 0 into 122 plus 1 into 60, 60 plus 2 into 15, 30 plus 3 into 2, 6 plus 4 into 1, 4 divided by summation f. Summation f is 122 plus 60 
plus 15 plus 2 plus 1. So this summation value if you add all those things you will get 200. So when you simplify you are getting a value. So 0 0.5. So this is your mean. So once it's done we are just going to apply it in the Poisson distribution formula. So e power minus m, m power x by x factorial. So now if you see I have just replaced uh, e power minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 power x by x factorial. That's it. Since we are, uh, how many times we are doing it? The frequency is 200. You remember in the binomial also we did. We multiply by 200. So 200 into p of x will give you f of x. So uh, we will just substitute the value in the beginning itself so that it is easy for us to calculate. We know e power minus 0 0.5 value in the calculator. So e power minus 0 0.5 we can calculate in calculator. Multiply by 200 you will get this. So it is easy for you to substitute. What are the values x is going to take? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is what given in the question. Okay. So we are going to substitute x is equal to 0. So what you will get? 121.3, 0 0.5 power 0 by 0 factorial. So anything power 0 is 1, 0 factorial is also 1. So what you will get? 121.3. But don't write in decimals. If you remember for binomial also I told you. So first value is 121. And second one, substitute x is 1. 121.3, 0 0.5 power 1 by 1 factorial. You will get 61. So whatever it is there in decimals, if it is uh, less than 0 0.5, write down the value as it is. If it is 0.5 and above, increase 1 digit. So if it is 121.6, then you will write 122 here. Since this is less than 5, I am writing 121. Truncate it properly. And then uh, like that you have to substitute 2, 3, 4 to get these values. So um, when, we subs when we got these values and if you add all the 3, then what you will get? The total will be 200. Yeah. So these are the frequencies that is uh, 121, 61, 15, 3, 0. And then when we use the chi-square formula, chi-square of uh, chi-square value is summation observed minus expected the whole square by expected same whatever we have done so uh, if you simplify by substituting these values i'm leaving the simplification to you so we'll get 0 0.025 which is less than the tabular column value what they have given 7.815 so if it's less than what we'll do uh, thus the hypothesis that the fitness is good can be accepted so this is what i observed in the question and this is what I have expected and since the difference between them is very less we are accepting it as simple as that and you can easily compare the values if you see in the given question they have given see here 122 and the answer what you have got 121 the second one they have given 60 yeah 60 what you have got in the final answer is 61. Then 15. What you have got? 15. Almost the same. 2. Here 3. 1. 0. If the difference is less, then what we will get? Uh, obviously, very small value. So, it will be less than the tabular column value. So, these are the types of problem in chi-square distribution. And uh, one more thing. And uh, this is the tabular column for T distribution. Anyhow, uh, they will give the values in the exam in case if you have to find it on your own. Uh, for example, 5 samples are given. Then what is degrees of freedom? 5 minus 1, 4. They will ask the signif uh, significance of le uh, level. So if they say 5%, then it is 0.05 it is here. If they say 1%, it is here. Other levels are there. So, But for you, always they will ask either 5% or 1%. So, 4 degrees of freedom, if they ask 5%, this value, 2.776. And if they ask 1%, it is 4.604. This is the T distribution table. So, level of significance is nothing but alpha. And degrees of freedom is nothing but uh, what, what they have given, V. V is equal to N minus 1, same notation I have given. And I will show the normal probability table also. Yeah, this is the normal distribution table. So, if they ask to find for uh, Z uh, 0.21, 0 
so from point 2 this is 0 this is 1 point 2 1 if you want I can zoom it yeah so if you have to find the value for point 2 1 so point 2 is here for z this is 0 this is 1 so point 2 1 means you will write this value uh, say point 4 6 so 0 point 4 is there so this is 0 1 2 where it is 6 is there uh, it's not visible so we'll change the question point 4 4 so point 4 and then 0 4 is there so point 4 plus 0 4 point 4 4 so these two will meet at this point so point 1700 is the answer and for that uh, uh, find the mean and standard deviation is like answer will be there and you will find the corresponding one so anyhow they will provide the values but this is a normal distribution table and that's a t distribution table and i will summarize all the formulas yeah complete sampling we'll see and if you remember first we took that standard normal variators z is equal to x bar minus mu by sigma by root 10 and for 95 percent confidence interval for mean First, we found that confidence interval for mean, right? So, x bar plus or minus 1.96 into sigma by root 10. This is for 95%. For 99%, x bar plus or minus 2.58 into sigma by root 10. So, for confidence interval, if they ask, we have to use this formula for mean. And then, uh, z is equal to x minus np by root npq. npq is given means we will use the formula. If sigma is given, what we will write? Z is equal to difference. This will become mu, right? So, what is the formula? Z is equal to difference divided by sigma by root 10. It's the same as what I told you in the beginning, standard normal variate. This is the difference divided by sigma by root 10. So, only two formulas there. So, what we will do? Uh, now, you will be clear with this. If this tabular column value is greater than 2.58, then we will check. We are checking it for 95%. Greater than 1.96 if you are checking means 99%. 99% or you can say 1% significance level. Uh, 100 minus 99 is 1%. Same way. 5% significance level. If this tabular column value is greater, then our hypothesis is rejected. If it's less than that, then we will not reject the null hypothesis. And here probable limits, uh, we did one problem. P plus or minus 2.58 into root of PQ by N. And then uh, part 3 problems, we saw difference between means. So, difference between means, what we will do? x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. And what are the confidence limits formula? x1 bar minus x2 bar plus or minus this confidence interval, whatever they have given, into root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. And finally, t-test t-test main formula is x bar minus mu by s into root 10. For finding s, we've, we've got two formulas. So, um, 1 by n minus 1 summation i is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar the whole square. x bar is nothing but mean of the values. And what is the probable limit? x bar plus r minus s by root 10 into t of 0 0.05. This is the limit. So, whenever we are using limit, we are using uh, tabular column values. And finally, chi square is what we have learned today. The formula is summation i is equal to 1 tn observed minus expected the whole square divided by expected frequency. That's it. So, sampling problems are very easy. So, first off you have to find whether it's a one tail or two tail test. And this is easy. And finally, uh, coming to t and chi square distribution, there is no one tail, two tail. So, directly you can apply the formula. So, we are done with sampling. So, module 5 completed. Thank you.